avoiding constipation and Now type of headaches. So there are two types of headache, primary headache and secondary headache. And primary headache, it is the normal disease and it is caused by uh, not any other severe disease like a cancer, aneurysms like the uh, disease. So it is the a primary headache is when the headache itself is the main problem. It is not a symptom of an underlying disease or condition. While the pain from primary headache can be disabling, the headache are not dangerous. The brain cannot feel pain. So the pain associated with primary headache comes from the inflammation of pain sensitive part of the body in and around the neck and head, including the most common types of headaches like migraines, tension headache, cluster headache are classified as a primary headaches. And this type of headaches can be very painful, but they are not dangerous. Secondary headaches caused by underlying medical condition that trigger pain sensitive areas in the neck and head are classified as a secondary headache. Secondary headaches are rare, but they can also be much more serious than primary headaches. Secondary headache can be warning sign of a more serious underlying condition, including brain tumors, aneurysm, meningitis, neck or brain injury. So this is the primary type of headache, migraine, tension, cluster headache, sinus headache. So we will first discuss about the cluster headache. In the cluster headache, the pain around one eye. So we can see here in the image. Cluster headache, which occur in cyclical patterns or cluster periods, are one of the most painful types of headache. A cluster headache commonly awaken you in the middle of the night with intense pain in or around one eye on one side of your head. Short time of frequent attack, known as cluster periods, can last from week to months, usually followed by remission period when the headache stops. During remission, no headache occurs for months and sometimes even years. Fortunately, cluster headache is rare and not life-threatening. Treatment can make cluster headache attack shorter and less severe. Now, common signs and symptoms. A cluster headache strike quickly, usually without warning. Although you might first have migraine like nausea. Common signs and symptoms during a headache include Intense pain that is generally situated in behind or around one eye, but may radiate to other areas of your face, head and neck. One-sided pain, restlessness, excessive tearing, redness of your eye on the affected side, stuffy or runny nose on the affected side, forehead or facial sweetening on the affected side, pale skin or flushing on your face, and swelling around your eyes on the affected side. So this is the same common symptoms and sign for the cluster headache. Now causes. The exit causes of cluster headache is unknown, but cluster headache patterns suggest that abnormalities in the body's physiological and biological clock play an important role. Unlike migraine and tension headache, cluster headache generally is not associated with triggers such as foods, hormonal changes or stress. Once cluster period begins, however, drinking alcohol may quickly trigger a splitting headache. For this reason, many people with cluster headache avoid alcohol consumption during a cluster period. Other possible triggers include the use of medications such as nitroglycerin, a drug used to treat heart disease. Now risk factors. Men are more likely to have cluster headache compared to the women. Age. Most people who have developed cluster headache are between the age of 20 and 50. Although condition can develop at any age. Smoking. Many people who get cluster headache attack are smokers. However, quitting smoker, smoking usually has no effect on the headache. Alcohol use. If patient have cluster headache, Drinking alcohol during the cluster period may increase the risk of attack. 
A family history having a parents a sibling who has had trust headache might increase the risk of pressure. Now diagnosis. Cluster headache has a characteristic type of pain and pattern of attack. A diagnosis depends on description of the attack, including pain, the location and severity of headache, and associated symptoms. Doctor will likely try to pinpoint the type and cause of headache using certain approaches like neurological examination, imaging test, produce detailed image of brain and blood vessels across sectional images of brain. Treatment. <laughs> there is no cure for cluster headache. The goal of treatment is to decrease the severity of pain, shorten the headache period and prevent the attacks. Because the pain of a cluster headache comes on suddenly and might subside within a short time, Cluster headache can be difficult to evaluate and treat as it requires fast acting medications. So some type of active medication can provide some pain relief quickly. The therapies listed below have proved to be most effective for acute and preventive treatment for cluster headache. Now active treatment. Fast acting treatment available from doctors include oxygen therapy, briefly inhaling pure oxygen through a mask provide a dramatic relief for most who use it. Triptan therapy, the injectable form of soma triptan, which is commonly used to treat migraine, is also an effective treatment for acute cluster headache. Another triptan medication like jolmitriptan can be taken in nasal spray for relief of cluster headache. Octreotride, an injectable synthetic version of the brain hormone somatostatin, is an effective treatment for cluster headache for some people, but overall it is less effective and act less quickly to relieve pain compared to the triptan derivatives. Local anesthetics, the numbling effect of local anesthetics such as lidocaine may be effective against cluster headache pain in some people when given through the nose. Dihydroagetamine, the injectable form of it, may be an effective pain deliver for some people with cluster headache. Now preventive treatment. Preventive therapy start at the onset of the cluster episode with the goal of suppressing attack. Determining which medicine to use often depends on the length and regularity of your episode under the guidance of doctor. Calcium channel blockers, example verapamil is often the first choice of choice for preventing cluster headache. Corticosteroids like inflammation suppressing drugs such as prednisones are fast acting preventive medication that may be effective for many people with cluster headaches. Lithium carbonate, it is used to treat bipolar disorder may be effective in preventing chronic cluster headache. Non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation. BNS use a handheld controller to deliver electrical stimulation to the vagus nerve through the skin. Nerve block. Injecting a numbling agent and corticosteroid into the area around the occipital nerve situated at the back of your head might improve the chronic cluster headache. Now, migraine. In the migraine, there is intense pain on one side of the head and always repeated in the same area. It is accompanied by the disturbance of vision and hearing, nausea and vomiting. Migraine attack can last for hours to days and the pain can be so severe that it interferes with your daily activity. For some people, a warning symptoms known as an aura occurs before or with the headache. An aura can include visual disturbance such as flashes of light or blind spot or other disturbance such as tingling on one side of the face or in an arm or leg and difficulty in speaking. Now, symptoms of migraine. Migraine symptoms 
broadly classified into the four stages prodrome aura attack and postdrome so uh, this third type of symptoms not everyone who has migraine goes through all the stages but some patients are suffering migraine this uh, from all the four stages now prodrome one or two days before a migraine you might Notice subtle changes that born of an upcoming migraine, including constipation, mood changes from depression to euphoria, food cravings, neck stiffness, increased urination, and fluid retention. Aura. For some people, and Aura might occur before or during migraines. Aura, a reversible symptom, was build up over several minutes and can last up to 60 minutes. Examples of migraines auras include visual phenomena such as seeing various shapes, bright spots, or flashes of lights, vision loss, difficulty in speaking, pains and needle sensation in an arm or leg, weakness or numbness in the face or one side of the body. The third stage of symptoms is the attack. A migraine usually lasts from 4 to 72 hours if untreated. During a migraine, patient may have pain usually on one side of your head, but often on both sides. Pain that throbs or pulses, Sensitivity to light, sound, and sometimes smells and touch, nausea and vomiting. And last stage of symptoms is post drone. After a migraine attack, patient might feel drained, confused, and burst out for up to a day. Some people report feeling excited. Sudden head movement might bring on the pain again briefly. Now, where to see a doctor if patient have a migraine? Migraine are often undiagnosed and untreated. If patients regularly have signs and symptoms of migraine, keep a record of his attacks and how they treated them. Then make an appointment with the doctor to discuss about his or headache. See the, your doctors immediately or go to emergency room if you have a, any of the following signs and symptoms which could indicate a more serious medical problem. A sudden severe headache like a thunderclap. Headache with fever, stiff neck, confusion, seizure, double vision, numbness or weakness in any part of the body, which could be a sign of a stroke. Headache are after a head injury. A chronic headache that is worse after coughing, exertion, straining, a sudden movement, new headache pain after age 50. So this is the all condition in which symptoms you can you can suggest the patient to check or uh, goes to the for the doctor over doctor overviews. Diagnosis: If patient have migraines or a, a family history of migraines. A neurologist will likely diagnose migraine based on his or her medical history, symptoms, and the physical and neurological examination. If patient condition is unusual, complex, or suddenly becomes severe, test to rule out other causes of your pain might include MRI and CT scan. Now treatment. Migraine treatment is aimed at stopping symptoms and preventing future attack. Many medications have been designed to treat migraines. Medications used to combat migraines fall into two broad categories. Pain relieving medication, also known as acute or abortive treatment. This type of drugs are taken during migraine attack and are designed to stop symptoms. While preventive medication are the drugs taken regularly, often daily, to reduce the severity or frequency of migraines. Now, pain relievers. The OTC, a prescription pain reliever, includes aspirin, ibuprofen, 
माइग्रेन रिलीफ मेडिकेशन डेट कंबाइंड कैफीन एस्प्रिन एंड एसिडामिनोफेन मे बी हेल्पफुल बट यूजली ओनली अगेंस्ट माइल्ड माइग्रेन पेन ट्रिप्टन डेरिवेटिव सुमा ट्रिप्टन एंड रिजा ट्रिप्टन आर यूज टू ट्रीट माइग्रेन बिकॉज दे ब्लॉक द पेन पाथवे इन द ब्रेन but it is not safe for those at risk of a stroke or heart attack dihydroagadamine available as a nasal spray or injection this drug is most effective when taken shortly after the start of migraine symptom for migraines that tends to last longer than 24 hours people with coronary artery disease high blood pressure or kidney or liver disease should avoid dihydroagadamine Let's read it then. This newer oral tablet is approved for the treatment of migraine with or without oral. Then calcitonin gene-related peptides antagonists, ibuprofen and remdesivir are oral CGRP antagonists recently approved for the treatment of acute migraine with or without oral in adults. Ibuprofen and nimejepen should not be taken with strong cytochrome p3 a4 inhibitors drug example is acletromycin erythromycin dildiazem tetraconazole ketoconazole means these drugs are not given with the acletromycin erythromycin or antifungal drugs ketoconazole etraconazole opioid medications because they can be highly addictive these are usually used only if no other treatment are available or effective antinausea drugs this can help if migraine with aura is accompanied by nausea and vomiting antinausea drugs include chlorpromazine metoclopramide and prochlorpromazine are used to treatment of migraine now preventive treatment so medication can help to prevent frequent migraines doctor may suggest some recommended preventive medication if patients have frequent long lasting or severe headache that don't respond well to treatment blood pressure lowering medication this include beta blockers such as propranolol and metoprolol tartrate calcium channel blockers such as verapamil can be helpful in preventing migraine with aura antidepressants or tricyclic antidepressants can prevent migraine antiseizure drugs valproate and topiramate might help patient have a less frequent migraine botox in the injection injection of botulinum toxin about every 12 weeks help prevent migraine in some adults and cgrp monoclonal antibody anemimab primanizumab etc are newer drugs approved by the fda to treat the migraine now sinus migraine in sinus migraine inflammation of the lining of the eight sinus cavity can cause a deep dull chronic ache around the eyes nose and head so sinus headaches are usually associated with migraine or other forms of headache and it is associated with pain and pressure in the face and sinuses and can cause nasal symptoms most of these headaches are not caused by sinus infection and generally should not be treated with antibiotic sinus headaches are headache that may feel like an infection in, in the sinuses you may feel pressure around the eyes cheeks and forehead symptoms pain pressure and fullness in the cheek brow or forehead worsening pain if you bend forward or lie down stuffy nose fatigue acute feeling in the upper teeth diagnosis the causes of headache can be difficult to determine the health provider will question you about your headache and do a physical examination 
Also, they will perform the imaging test to help you determine the causes of your headache, including CT scan and MRI scan. Now, treatment. Most people who assume they have sinus headache actually have migraines or tension type headache. Pain reliever available without a prescription. Example, acetaminophen, naproxen, sodium and ibuprofen. Triptans derivatives. Many people with migraine headache use triptan to relieve pain. Triptans work by blocking pain pathway in the brain, but promote constriction of blood vessel and should be avoided if patient have a history of heart disease or stroke. Medication includes sumatriptan, vizatriptan, elmotriptan, neratriptan, zolmotriptan are used to treat this migraine. Agats. Agatamines are less effective than triptans, but agat seems to be most effective in those whose pain lasts for more than 72 hours. Dihydroagatamine is an agate derivative that is more effective and has fewer side effects than agatamine. Let's be detail, it blocks pain pathway similar to a triptan medication, but it does not appear to constrict blood vessels, so it is safer compared to the triptan derivatives to treat the migraine. CGRP antagonists Ibro, Japan and Rimejipans are oral calcitonin gene-related peptides receptor antagonists approved for the treatment of acute migraine. Then CGRP monoclonal antibodies, antinogia medications, glucocorticoids are also used to treat the sinus migraine. Next one is tension headache. Pain squeezing around crown of head. Pain squeezing around crown of head. It is called as tension headache. And it feels like a tight band around the head. A tension type of headache is the most common type of headache, yet its cause are not well understood. Multiple factors can bring on a tension headache, including stress, inadequate sleep, and poor posture. The main symptom is pain on both sides of the head that may be associated with muscle pain. Managing a tension type headache is often balanced between practicing healthy habits, finding effective non-drug treatments and using medication appropriately. Symptoms, dull, intense head pain, sensation of tightness or pressure across the forehead or on the side and back of the head, tenderness in the skull, neck and shoulder muscles. Tension type headache are divided into two main categories, episodic and chronic tension type of headache. Now in episodic tension type headache can last from 30 minutes to a week. Frequent episodic tension type headache occur less than 15 days a month for at least three months. And frequent episodic tension type headache may become chronic. In chronic tension type headache, the last hours, it, it up to the last hours and may be continuous. If headache occurs 15 or more days a month for at least three months, they are considered as a chronic headache. Now treatment. So treatment is same as previous one. Pain relievers, aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, sodium are used as a OTC medicine. Then combination medicine like aspirin and acetaminophen are both are often combined with caffeine or a sedated drugs in a single medication. Combination drugs may be more effective than single ingredients, pain reliever. Triptans and narcotics for people who experience both migraines and episodic tension type headaches, a triptan can effectively relieve the pain of both headaches. Opioid and narcotics are rarely used because of their side effects and potential for dependency. Preventive treatment. In preventive treatment, doctor prescribed tricyclic antidepressants. Tricyclic antidepressants including amitriptyline and protriptyline are the most commonly used medication to prevent tension type headaches. Other antidepressants, evidence also support that use of the antidepressants, venlafaxine and metajapines are also useful to treat tension type of headache. Anti-convulsion and muscle relaxation. Other medications that may prevent tension type headache include anti-convulsion such as gabapentin and topiramate. 
Preventive me medication may require several weeks or more to build up in your system before they take effect. Now, next one is the temples joint headache. This is the temporal mandibular joints and due to the imbalancing at this location of this joint, there is a headache happens. So it is called as TMJ headache. When patient have a headache, they not think that his or her jaw could be the causes. But the TMJ headache is the face, cheek and head pain caused by a TMJ disorder. This disorder causes pain in the temporal mandibular joint, the joint that connect the jaw to the skulls, which spread upwards to other area of the head. The TMJ is the hing connecting your jaw to your skull. It allows you to do things like talk, laugh and chew and enable you your jaw to move up and down and side to side. Due to the hing and sliding motion, this joint is a bit more complicated than other joints in the body and cause a variety of symptoms if there is something incorrect, including headaches. These are typically called temporal mandibular disorder. So this is the osa. This is the disc, this is the ear canal, and this is the condyle. Symptoms. Pain is commonly in the ear area. The temples are over your eyes. Pain or difficulty chewing food. This includes more severe head pain when chewing. Unable to open their mouth fully. Jaw clicking or popping sounds when moving the jaw. Ringing in the ear, a swollen face, sensitive teeth, but no obvious dental problem, and experience migraines. TMD disorder can be caused by a variety of issues, including misalignment of the upper and lower jaw, bruxism, and excessive teeth grinding, or jaw chin clenching, dislocation of the jaw joint, excessive gum. Chewing, the joint being damaged by injury such as a blow or other impact, damage or displacement of the meniscus disc, connective tissue disorders that affect the temporal mandibular joints, malformation of the TMD anatomy from birth, from birth, the joints cartilage lining being damaged by arthritis, including osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or inflammatory arthritis. <coughs> Treatment. Treatment include TMJ exercise for jaw pain. Simple stretching exercise can help to relieve TMJ headache substantially. Joint taste, joint raise, restricting jaw movement to a range that is comfortable. This includes opening your mouth and moving your jaw from side to side. Also keeping your teeth apart when at rest. Hit or cold pack. Applied directly to the painful areas. TMJ physiotherapy, including acupuncture, relaxation exercise, poster improvement, and neck treatment are useful in the TMJ disorder. TMJ joint mobilization, a soft food diet, eating a softened diet that doesn't worsen your jaw pain. Medication to relieve jaw pain, including muscle relaxant. Non steroidal anti inflammatory medications are certain medications used to treat depression. Surgery for TMJ, a rare treatment option to fix the TMJ disorder. Now we move towards the second common symptom nausea and vomiting. Introduction Nausea is an uneasiness of the stomach that often accompanies. accompanies the urge to vomit, but doesn't always lead to vomiting. Vomiting is the possible voluntary or involuntary emptying of stomach content through the mouth. So there is a main difference is that in nausea, there is a sometimes vomiting happens, but 
it doesn't mean that every time in nausea nausea case there is a vomiting comes but vomiting is the possible voluntary or involuntary ab chaho ya na chaho lekin aapka wo stomach empty kar lega so nausea is expressed as an unpleasant subjective sensation as a result from stimulation of the gastrointestinal lining the chemoreceptor trigger zone the vestibular apparatus or the cerebral cortex while vomiting is an observable observable neuromuscular reflex that constitutes a final common pathway after stimulation of one or more of these regions <coughs> vomiting can occur without nausea and nausea does not always lead to vomiting causes and risk factor of nausea two of the most common causes of nausea and vomiting are stomach flu gastroenteritis and food poisoning other common reasons of nausea include early stage of pregnancy which is called morning sickness sickness and other forms of motion sickness severe pain being exposed to chemical toxin emotional stress such as fever such as fear gold gold bladder disease indigestion particular smells or odor chemotherapy intestinal obstruction migraine morning sickness motion sickness this cause the nausea the other possible causes for nausea and vomiting include acute liver failure alcohol use disorder anaphylaxis anorexia appendicitis brain tumors crohn disease depression diabetic ketoacidosis dizziness ear infection and last thing fever food allergy food poisoning these all are the number of condition which who cause the nausea and vomiting now diagnosis a physical examination health history laboratory test and other test are all used by the doctor to find the cause for your nausea and vomiting in most cases the causes of nausea and vomiting is easily identified as it may occur in a non pregnancy or shortly after ingesting a drug or toxin now this is the important part when to call the doctor about nausea and vomiting if the nausea lasts for more than a few days so this is the important uh, point for all the pharmacists to guide and give the suggestion to the patient if they have a vomiting and nausea last for more than a few days or if there is a possibility of being a pregnant if home treatment is not working dehydration is present or a non injury has occurred such as head injury or infection that may be causing the vomiting adults should consult a doctor if vomiting occurs for more than one day diarrhea and vomiting last more than 24 hours or there are sign of dehydration take an infant a child under 6 years of age to the doctor if vomiting last more than a few hours diarrhea is present sign of dehydration occurs there is a fever or if the child has not urinated for 4 to 6 hours take a child over age 6 years to the doctor if vomiting last for one day diarrhea combined with vomiting last for more than 24 hours and there are any sign of dehydration there is a fever there is a fever higher than 101 degrees or the child has not urinated for 6 hours so if child and infant is below 6 years then there is a vomiting not more than few hours why above 6 years not more than 24 hours you should seek immediate medical care if any of the following situation occur with vomiting there is a blur in the vomit severe headache or stiff neck 
lethargy, confusion, a decreased alertness, severe abdominal pain, diarrhea, rapid breathing or pulses. Now treatment of nausea. Nausea can commonly be elevated with self-care. Nausea that are low risk yet have variable research evidence. The following tips can be helpful. Get some rest. Stay hydrated. Drinking cold, clear, carbonated or sour beverages such as ginger, ale, lemonade and water and try to take small sips. Green tea may also help to calm nausea. Avoid exposure to strong odor. Food and cooking smells, perfume and smoke can be triggers. So avoid it. Avoid other triggers like enclosed stuffy rooms, heat, humidity, flickering lights and driving. Eat blend foods. If you have been vomiting, wait some time to eat solid food until your body feels ready. Avoid fatty or spicy food. This food can make nausea worse. Don't combine hot and cold food simultaneously. Drink beverages slowly. Avoid brushing the patient's teeth after the he or her it. To stave off vomiting, you could try taking small sip of clear carbonated beverages or fruit juice, except orange and grape fruit, which are too acidic and it may increase the vomiting episode. To avoid a reduced motion sickness in a car, sit facing the front windshield. Now, non pharmacological treatment of nausea and vomiting. An ancient China, Chinese practice known as acupressure traditional has been used to help address mild nausea and morning sickness. This involves stimulating an acupressor or acupuncture point called P6. If patient nausea is due to chemotherapy for cancer, acupuncture may be help, helpful and relaxation therapy is also helpful to treat the nausea. Now, pharmacological treatment. If patient having a motion sickness over uh, motion sickness, OTC medications can help improve the symptoms. These include diamond hydrinate, maclegine, chewable or liquid antacid, bismuth subsalicylate, a solution of glucose, fructose, and phosphoric acid. If these medications don't help the patient feel better, a wide variety of prescription oral medications are also used for the treatment of nausea, like scopolamine patches may also help helpful for long trips like a cruise. Now, treatment of vomiting. There is a four classes of agents, antidopaminergic, in which phenothiazine and metoclopramide, antihistamine and anticholinergic, serotonin, 5-HC3 receptor antagonist and miscellaneous agents. So, mechanism of nausea and vomiting and vertigo. Vomiting from drug, radiation and metabolic disorder are generally stimulated through the CNS chemo trigger zone which is called a CTZ dopamine mediator, which further triggered the vomiting center in the brain. Nausea of motion sickness is initiated by stimulation of the labyrinthine mechanism of the ear, which sits, which send a signal to the CTZ. The vomiting center may also be stimulated by GI irritation, motion sickness, and vestibular neuritis and others. Now this is the treatment for the uh, prescription medicine and OTC medicine. Antidopaminergic agents, phenothiazine, which is deto receptor antagonist and it acts at this chemo trigger zones. But it is not used in children under these six years age. Then next molecule is the trifluchromazine. It is also not used in children under the age of 2.5 years. 
Now next is the N D two receptor antagonist. Phenothiazine. Sorry. Uh, thiethyl pelagin smellet. And it is also used as a anti dopaminergic agent. Another drug is promethazine. Promethazine, it is also D2 receptor antagonist. And do not use this drug since it will cause severe hypertension. So, this uh, promethazine uh, medicine given through the intramuscular route only, but not given through intravenous route because it causes hypertension. It is also not used in children below the 12 years age. The another non phenothiazine therapies include metoclopramides, and metoclopramides are also used as a ST, uh, ST, ST3 antagonist activities, means it is serotonin antagonist. The antihistamines, piperazines, maclizines, buclizines, these all are antihistamine medicine and they also used to treat nausea and vomiting. The cyclizin medicine, it is another class of antihistamine medicine and it is also available in 50 mg tablet that can be taken without water by sieving, dissolving or swelling ball but not recommended for children below the 12 years of age. Now, serotonin 5 ST 3 receptor antagonist, ondensetron, dolacetron, these drugs are used right now widely. Nausea and vomiting due to the APAP poisoning treatment to acute leodopa induced visual hallucination, prostacyclin induced nausea and vomiting. Reduction in bulimic episode in bulimia nervosa patients, social anxiety disorders, spinal or epidural morphine in these priorities. Now constipation. Constipation occurs when bowel movement becomes less frequent and stool becomes difficult to pass. Generally, a person is considered to be constipated when bowel movement results in passage of small amount of hard, dry stool, usually fewer than three times a week. Other key features that usually define constipation including stools are dry and hard, patient bowel movement is painful and stools are difficult to pass, patient have a feeling that they have not fully emptied their bowels, How does constipation happen? Constipation happens because the patient's colon absorbs too much water from waste, which dry out the stool, making it hard and consistency and difficult to push out from the body. If patient have constipation, food may move too slowly through the digestive tract. This gives the colon more time, too much time to absorb water from the waste. The stool becomes dry, hard and difficult to push out. The causes of constipation, there are many causes of constipation, lifestyle, choice, medication, medical condition and pregnancy. Common lifestyle causes of constipation include eating food low in fiber, not drinking enough water, not getting enough exercise, changes in regular routine such as traveling or eating or going to bed at different times, eating large amount of milk or cheese, stress, resisting the urge to have bowel movement. Medication used to treat the nausea, uh, to treat the constipation. Strong pain relieving medication like the narcotic containing codeine, oxycodone and hydroxymorphone. non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and naproxen. Antidepressant including the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Clozidine, a tricyclic antidepressant like amitriptyline, antacid containing calcium and aluminium, iron pills, allergy medications such as antihistamines, certain blood pressure medicine including calcium channel blockers and beta blockers, 
साइकेट्रिक मेडिकेशन लाइक क्लोजापिन एंड ओलनाजेपिन एंटी कन्वर्जन सीजो मेडिकेशन सजे फिनिडोइन एंड गाबा पेंडिन एंड एंटी नोजिया मेडिकेशन लाइक ऑनडेसेटोन आर यूज टू ट्रीट दी कॉन्स्टिपेशन नाउ दिस इज द मेडिकल कंडीशन एंड हेल्थ में दैट कैन कॉज कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंडोक्राइन कंडीशन लाइक अंडर एक्टिव थायरॉइड ग्लांड एरेमिया हाइपरकैल्सिनिया कोलोरेक्टल कैंसर इरिटेबल बाउल सिंड्रोम न्यूरोलॉजिकल डिसऑर्डर्स लाइक इंक्लूडिंग स्पाइनल कोड इंजरी मल्टीपल स्क्लेरोसिस पार्किंसन डिजीज एंड स्ट्रोक इंटेस्टिनल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन मल्टीपल ऑर्गन डिजीज सच एज एमिलियर एमि एमिलोडिसिस लैप्सस एंड स्क्लेरोडर्मा प्रेगनेंसी symptoms a uh, main symptom is that fewer than 3 bowel movement a big stool sir dry hard and uh, lumpy stool are difficult or painful to pass stomach ache or cramps patient feel bloated and nauseous patient feel that they haven't completely emptied their bowel after a movement now diagnosis and test doctor will first ask question about the medical history bowel movement and lifestyle and routines of patient medical history this question may include what are your current and past disease health condition have you lost or gained any weight recently have you had any previous digestive tract surgeries what medication and supplements do you take for other disorder and for the relief of constipation Does anyone in your family have constipation or disease of the digestive tract, or a history of colon cancer? Have you had a colonoscopy? So this is the common questionnaire for all the pharmacists and the doctor to ask the patient who are coming for the complaint of constipation. Now bowel movement history. This question may include how often do you have a bowel movement? what do your stool like looks like have you noticed any blood or red streaks in your stool have you ever seen blood in the toilet bowl or on, on the toilet paper after you wipe then another question is that lifestyle habits and routines what food and beverages do you eat and drink what is your exercise routine your doctor will also perform a physical exam which include a check of your vital signs your abdomen will also be touched to check for pain tenderness swelling and lumps be aware that patients doctor will also perform a rectal exam this is a finger exam of the inside of your rectum it is a quick check for any masses or problem that can be felt by finger now lab test and other medical test to find the cause of constipation Lab test, blood and urine test reveal sign of hyperthyroidism, anemia, and diabetes. A stool sample checks for sign of infection, inflammation, and cancer. Imaging test, CT scan, MRI, colonoscopy. An uh, internal view of your colon vitroscope may be performed. During this procedure, a small sample of tissue may be taken to test for cancer or other problem, and any found polyps will be removed. Colorectal transit study. other bowel function test these are used to diagnose the constipation causes treatment most cases of mild to moderate constipation can be managed by you by patient at home self care start by taking an an inventory for what the patient eat and drink and then making changes some recommendation to help relieve the constipation include drink 2 to 4 extra glasses of water a day avoid caffeine containing drinks and alcohol which can cause dehydration add fruits vegetable whole grain and other high fiber foods to your diet daily eat fewer high fat foods like meat egg and cheese eat prunes and a bran cereals get moving exercise add in over the counter supplementary fibers to your diet example is a good if still needed then take a very mild otc softener or luxative milk milk of magnesia 
mineral oil and enemas and stimulant luxuries like bisquadel or senna are other options. Now, so, conservation treatment. There are so, family treatment, so, stimulant luxative, osmotic luxative, detergent luxative, prokinetic luxative, enemas, lubricant stimulants, large volume enemas, and opioid antagonist. Uh, madam, still I have time. Uh, uh, I will conclude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we are about to uh, like finish in time. So it is okay. better to conclude in five minutes. Okay, okay. So uh, now uh, within five minutes, I will conclude it. Yes. Now we discuss about the diarrhea. More than three loose stools in 24 hours period and less common than constipation. If occurs greater than three weeks, it is a chronic. Diarrhea may lead to dehydration, malabsorption, fatigue, periana, skin breakdown, and electrolyte imbalance. Etiologies of diarrhea. So drugs, infection, internal feeds, partial bowel obstruction, overflow, incontinency, malabsorption, emotional, psychological stress, GI bleeding, radiotherapy, and tumors. These all are the Etiologies of diarrhea. Now, uh, we'll discuss about the non pharmacological intervention. So, rehydration, electrolyte correction, avoid milk, gas forming food, hold luxative, consider bulk agents such as bran, but use with caution. So, this is the non pharmacological intervention to treat the diarrhea. In pharmacological intervention, adjuvants like kaolin, atapiclet, Mucosal, prostaglandin inhibitors, mesalazine, bismuth, opioids like codeine, morphine, diphenoxylate, lopinamide, and octreotides are used to treat the pharmacological treatment for the diarrhea. Thank you, everyone. Madam, uh, now I have concluded. Now, any, any, anyone have a question? Please ask me. Anyone have a question? If anybody has any question, you can write down in the check, in chat box. We will try to solve your uh, queries. Sir, I think there is no question to ask. Okay, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, team. Sadhan. Possible triggers when to see the doctors. That was very informative uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Okay, so all attendees, uh, this link will go into inactive within five minutes. So, badhaj attendee, our link mathi nikdi na je navi link che session four mathe ni. Please join with that link. Uh, you can leave the, this meeting.